the algorithms do that intentionally. Rebecca, what do you think? Well, you know, this puts me in a really uncomfortable position, Neil, because I usually am on the side of no government intervention and very pro-business, pro-investor. However, there have been times in our history where the Supreme Court has weighed in and said that, you know, regulation of private business to make sure that they are um, delivering services equally amongst various people uh, has been appropriate. So what I do see, I, I sort of disagree. I do believe that there is sort of a systemic lean left on across all of our social platforms. We've seen it a lot this year, and I really think that they use the data privacy snafu with Facebook to uh, implement even more controls on, quote, hate speech and, you know, making sure that these voices are, are censored, really. And it is a big problem. And one of two things are going to happen. People are going to look elsewhere for uh, their, in their content, and the result will be uh, bad stock prices, or people will just say, hey, you know what, we're not going to use these, these, me these well, mediums. With, with, with Google, for example, that's easy you said than done. I think it controls, what, 90 percent of the search market? I mean, it's possible you lose that by, by making mistakes like this, but wh where do you think that's going, Ross? Yeah, I mean, well, sources are important. I think everyone's learning. We need to know where we're getting our news from, and I think people are becoming more and more aware just because something pops up at the top of the search engine doesn't necessarily mean this is and the most reliable And don't they call source. what is the most popular the mainstream media? And if you want yes. to make a general argument right. the mainstream media leans left, I sure. don't think that's a Herculean leap, then you're going to to get left-leaning right you're not results. going to get a tumblr blog for example they want bigger companies that have some backing some history but yeah to your point rebecca my big worry is i see that as well but i don't want the government policing this mm -hmm. i mean these are the same guys remember when they hauled all the banking executives up and were lecturing them on how not to lose money and i'm thinking these guys lose trillions of dollars every year and they're lecturing <laughs> well, forget it it's <laughs> a whole hypocritical thing but that's what scares me the most. I think if investors have to be worried about anything, it's a government fix. It's true. And, you know, I think that these uh, socials seem to forget that our country is pretty evenly divided. We are left and right. And that is going to speak to the pocketbook of half of America. So let's not forget that either. That's a very good point. Um, I want to switch, guys, if you don't mind. Today's a big day uh, for technology, for Apple devotees. A lot of people say, oh, you're doing a commercial for Apple. But it's a good ga gauge on the economy, the new phones are out. I believe the new watches are out as well. This is the scene early on. Is this a live shot, guys, or is this earlier today? I think it was early today in the Apple Store in New York. Um, but long lines, and Russ was telling me that that's, you know, typical on a, on a big product release day. You have one of the new phones, right? Yes. Now, uh, this is which one? This is the XS. Okay, so, so the, not the big, big one. So there's the giant one. See, which, I had the big, big yeah, one right, right here. <laughs> That's and, an iPad. Uh, don't, that this don't fool them, Neil. You need to be honest. All right, you got me. Uh, yeah, so this is the XS, and okay. uh, basically there's the SX. Geez, the names. XS Max right. is the giant one. Uh, too big for me. We were talking about it. I can't use the, the bigger one. It's, it's too big it's for my humongous, hands. It's humongous, right? Yeah. yeah but, but the interesting thing this year is, like, so Apple, the way they do these cycles is that they have the, like, extreme change in design. That kind of came last year. So this is more about changing the components inside. Did you like it? Have you been playing around with it? I've been playing around with it. I just started messing around with it. Um, I think, you know, the camera has enhanced, has improved. I think if you bought one last year, you're probably not going to see the, like, world-changing difference between this one. But that's standard for Apple. They just refine the old model, yeah. and then the next year they do a more drastic change. What I'm finding remarkable, Rebecca, and I know this is your, your wheelbarrow, that if, if people are not blinking at the thought of spending a lot of money on a phone, even if they don't necessarily feel it's justified to make that leap just yet, it's not the price that's holding them back. And, and I'm wondering... What that says about our economy, our environment, our markets, if people are looking at even marginal leaps and saying, yeah, I, 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 could, I could do it. Yeah, it's reflective of the uh, tax cuts, the uh, outbeat of earnings uh, all these quarters. Uh, you know, our economy is on fire, Neil. Top earnings, I mean, records yesterday on S&P and the Dow. So we know that we have a absolutely roaring economy, and these people are uh, going out and waiting in line, too. And I just got my ex, my ex, like, uh, you know, eight months ago or something. I'm like, really? Already? It's obsolete? <laughs> have you read all the reviews on these phones? Not a one about the quality of the phone call. <laughs> no one makes phone calls anymore. Are you camera? still calling people, Neil? I am. I am. 